Welcome back, Zero K fans! This is Shadow Fury 33 with another exhibition match, this time between Lowry and Cube on Battle for Planet 17, which is one of the most famously asymmetric maps that Zero K has as a featured 1v1 map. So let's get started. This map is. Well, it's a map we've seen several times before. North layer is Lowry, southeast is Cube, going for Shieldbot Factory, but Lowry is going for Cloakies. Of course, like I said, this is rather asymmetric, as you can see, nice little ridge here in the center with absolutely no respect for symmetry of any kind. I'll maybe along a line like this, maybe, I don't know, it's, I don't know, it's weird. But anyway, this, oh, I have to select something to do that. Line like this, oh, forget it. Oh, there we go. A line like this, maybe that's a symmetry line, but nope. It's just asymmetric. Don't even bother to ask. Anyway, Cubay has morphed beam laser E cell morph while Lowry is light particle beam E cell. So both players are going for weapon and E cell. Which, as we saw in the last game, was is not the most popular with higher level players, but admittedly, actually Lowry and Cubay, I'm a little bit surprised that Lowry and Cubay are going for this. Because they are definitely higher level players. I guess they figured they can get away with it. On this map, it's actually kind of risky. This is not the smallest map in the game. Or sorry, the biggest map in the game, but it's also not the smallest map in the game, not by any means. I believe, well, there are a lot of small maps. There are a lot of kind of jokey small maps, but this is definitely a pretty small map. Still, should be enough time. I mean, the fact that both players went for weapons is kind of the important thing, because that means that neither player really has an economic advantage as a result of the other person going for weapons. Anyway, Lowry is setting himself up more for... Now he's setting himself for raiding afterwards. He does have some glaives set up in front of Cubay's base. Cubay not really pushing out yet. He is shield, so he's going to be probably focusing a bit more on getting a slower build defensive setup. I'm a bit surprised these bandits have not. Well, okay, I'm a bit surprised these bandits have not been supplemented. I'm surprised. I'm not surprised they're staying at home and defending a little bit. I'm just surprised they haven't been supplemented in order to go out and raid a little bit. Lowry is trying to raid, trying to just double check, see what Cubay's up to, keep him honest, and he will find Cubay's commander. Not for long, but also find that Cube is not expanding over to the northeast side of the map. Or at least, not obviously. And he isn't, though. That, that is true. Like, Lowry, if he thinks he's not expanding on the northeast side of the map, then he's right. Cube is not. However, Cube setting up a caretaker very early on. He's going to try to get economy and then power his production through, while Lowry instead going for more continuous production while building up his economy, getting his early. Well, his early wind generators, and then. His metal extractors are about on par, actually a little bit ahead of Cubes, and he is going quickly for the center. Lowry is taking an economic lead early on, though Cube trying to do what he can to keep that even, and actually does have a power advantage at the moment. And once that becomes solid, then overdriving will start, as soon as he gets, well, to the point where he's actually accessing power, which isn't happening anytime soon. With this caretaker, he is spending a lot of money here, putting 20 metal per second into the factory, getting a roach as well, we've got to keep an eye on this one. Roaches are very important, they tend to turn the game around, and whenever they're out, it's best to be aware of them. Because they will explode and make magic happen. And by magic, I mean death. Lots and lots of death. But it's robot death, so it doesn't matter. Robots don't count. Of course, some robots, right act robots rights activist is going to be on me for just saying stuff like that. They get a defamation lawsuit in the mail, or defamation suit, or C and D in the mail as a result of that from an anti robot anti defamation group. Then we'll know why. Anyhow, vitalist comments aside, or rather, organicist comments aside. Lowry is doing a very good job taking the center. Cube going on the south side, getting a pretty good economy on there, as well as looks like through overdrive. Yes, he is. Well, starting to try to overdrive. He's not hasn't quite accessed enough to fully overdrive yet. Going for an airplane plant as well. A bit surprising, only on 20 metal, but he's switching out entirely to it. Not even focusing on shield bots. Going instead with a complete fax switch to air. While Lowry staying on cloakies and continuing to push with. Well, actually, with rectors. In fact, okay, Lowry's focusing more on constructing around the map, setting up his resources more for continued investment than powering out a lot of units. On the other hand, 
Kyube definitely is trying to power out as many units as he can. And he is accessing metal at the moment, so it's not entirely surprising that he's doing that. And the plane plant going for shadows. So a lot of shadows will be built up fairly soon and quite quickly. As Kyube just about starts to access metal. As he starts building up this factory and... There it goes. It's, it's going to be 30 metal a second into the factory to build up these shadows. Not sure how effective it's going to be. He's going for a comm snipe, no doubt. He is going to try to kill Lowry's commander. And Lowry's commander is not really that necessary. As you can see, a lot of wind generators have been built. They're on relatively high ground. I mean, it's not the highest ground, but it's fairly high. So it's going to be good for... At least, if his commander dies, he won't lose all his energy. And... Overall, Lowry has an economic advantage. I mean, the commander... There it goes. Like I said, there's the comm snipe. And it will be successful, too. Lowry's commander goes down. Admittedly, only morph level 1, but still goes down. Kyube's commander is still up. Kyube still has the build power and energy. And Lowry's commander goes down. It looks like about the same time that the wind actually stops happening. So, despite my earlier comments, Lowry's energy situation is not quite where he'd like it to be. He still has some safe energy with solar plants, but... His wind generation just died out right as his commander did. At the same time, Kyube is starting to push out with bandits trying to make sure he gets a little bit... Oh, this roach actually... I can't believe I missed that! That roach blew up a bunch of glaives! That would have been, an, uh, well, certainly an entertaining thing to see. But Tick is actually in place for Lowry as well. I don't see any further roaches for Kyube. It looks like, yeah, Kyube is not going for any more roaches. Nothing is showing up. No icons. It's a little star inside a hex... or inside a little oval, but... None of that. Shadows over are coming in, getting rid of some of the Lotuses having been built up. Lotus and Defender going down. That opens the door for the bandits somewhat. Though admittedly the Glaives are probably the bigger threat. More defense destruction from... Well, defense and mechs. Mechs going down, so Lowry actually getting a bit behind in economy. His commander going down was a bit of a blow, mostly because it does mean it's harder for him to expand out to the front lines. He still has a lot of safe mechs. He still has the whole north side of the map. He still hasn't actually captured most of that yet. Well, not all of it anyway. Some of it he's captured, some of it he hasn't. Trident is up to get rid of these shadows, but they will run away in time. Does cause a bit of a no-fly zone here in the center of the map. So someone protecting Lowry's investment, but that's the only anti-air he has at the moment. No Jethro's. Another Trident is coming in, but that's all he has is these Tridents. Which admittedly might be all he needs. However, no, it's not, because Avenger coming in, along with Bandits to finish it off, Tridents being gunships, they fly low enough to the ground that most raiders can hit them. Including, of course, Bandits. So at this point, Lowry, well behind, actually, he's in military, is way behind compared to Kyube. Especially since Kyube has just been powering out these air units. Lowry powering out mostly Glaives, and has been powering out some Tridents, but really only the one now. Well, the two, really, but... Doing what he can, but this Trident really not equipped to deal with Avengers effectively, especially not on its own, it, and able to do some damage, but at the same time, the gunship plant goes down, a couple wind generators follow, and I'm very surprised Lowry has not built Jethro's. I am just kind of shocked he hasn't bothered with that. Similarly, Razors, or possibly, well, it'll be Razors Kiss in this version, but Razors... Haxa, I'm not surprised. Or Chainsaw, I'm not surprised. But Razor, I am surprised. Jethro, there we go. Now it's being built up. Lowry powering some of those through with about 30 metal or so in. Glaive trying to come in for counterattack. Able to get rid of an Avenger, actually, with those Glaives. Nicely done, but... Still, those Glaives need to power through. And it looks like the Glaives could go in for an attack right now. I mean, admittedly, the Shadows are a bit of a threat, but... The Bandits are not. I think that Lowry might be waiting until he gets Jethro's up into the front lines, and then from there he'll be able to get rid of the Aryans no problem. And then with that, be able to power through these bandits, kill all the bandits, get through from there, and just deal with the Aryans using the Jethro's, while the Glaives deal with the rest of the base. But it looks like at this point, Kyube is not going to have any of that. He is building up a lot of Glaives, or a lot of bandits, to make sure that does not happen. And Kyube going in for the kill, trying to get rid of as much as he can. Getting He will be able to get rid of the Kogibot factory. Not enough is in place to get rid of it. Jethro is able to get rid of one of the shadows. And I think Lowry might be going for a counterattack. Not sure he is. Looks like he's going for defending the center. But he might go for it. However, a Razor has been. Well, Razor's kiss in this version, like I said. Has been deployed. Not that it matters so much. The Cloaky Factory is the target. And one more bomb will make it go down. However, all of Cubase bombers on the way back home. Running through Jethro lines. Two of them go down. 
three of them go down. Possibly a fourth, we'll see. The Avengers trying to deal with the factory as best they can, but these Jethros should be able to finish them off before that happens. Four Shadows ultimately getting killed, possibly five getting killed, and Bandit's coming in to get rid of the Jethros on the retreat. However, the Klogibot factory has been saved. Kube was not successful in that attack. The Klogibot factory is perfectly fine. Now, Kube, on the other hand, does still have a fair amount of melee. Actually, both players are accessing quite a lot, and Kube still has multiple caretakers. Lowry trying to push all the metal he can into production, getting a bunch of warriors now. Trying to use those to get rid of the bandits. Very good idea to do that, but of course, you will want to get more Jethros because more units will likely be forthcoming. Er no, never mind. There's still, I mean, there's still shadows in play, but it looks like new ones will not be quite so likely. However, Lowry still needs to catch up with the bandits, and that's going to be the problem. The bandits able to tear apart Lowry's entire center. Now, Lowry still had an economic advantage, I should point out. Some damage was dealt to the metal extractors over here by Bandit by Glaze earlier on. And Cube actually hasn't really been able to expand as much as Lowry has. Although admittedly, these Glaives, or sorry, these bandits are taking out a lot of what Lowry had set up. And the bandits now getting caught up to by the warriors. Warriors doing what they can. However, the lotuses are the main threat to those bandits. I think these warriors will be able to get to here in time, but no, not quite. The bandits able to tear apart this entire west side. And Shadow's coming in to get rid of the warriors before they deal any damage. And down, actually none of them go. One of the warriors left with 8 health and goes down to a bandit, but not for killing two of its own. And the other warrior, in a much healthier position, able to get rid of, well, three bandits, nearly killed the other two as well. So Kube losing a lot of his bandits, but he has tons of production, that's not a problem at all. While Lowry, on the other hand, also has production, has his warriors up, has enough glaives to at least keep the bandits slightly distracted. Not really much else than that. The Warriors are what's going to get rid of the Bandits. That's the main asset he has. And Jethro's just in case. Or the Jethro's. This Jethro right here is going to die. Actually, most of them are going to die. These ones to the west are fine. These ones to the east are dead. The Bandits will take them out before they're able to do anything. The Warrior's trying to save them, but the Warrior is not high enough. It can't. It does not have line of sight to the Bandits. It cannot destroy them. That is not going to work out too well, especially with the Warrior being dead. However, the Warrior is still in a pretty good position to get rid of the Bandits. The Bandits are not focusing on it at all. They're focusing on the Jethro's instead. And Glaives coming into flank. Not a bad flank, but far too few Glaives. Nowhere near enough to get rid of those Warriors. Sorry, get rid of those Bandits with any effect. Enough Warriors coming in from behind, though, to flank the Bandits out somewhat. If they go to attack again, they will be taken up by the Warriors. However, I'm pretty sure that Kube is well aware of this. Oh, wait, that's not Kube. That's, this is Kube. Kube is not just now aware of this. In fact, he only has line of sight. He does not have radar. The Warriors, unfortunately, getting distracted, trying to hit the Shadows. But they will be able to turn down to hit the Bandits soon enough, and... The Bandits will not die that easily. Surround the Warrior and get rid of it before it's able to deal too much damage. You really need to have enough Warriors. Getting them surrounded is a bad thing, of course. And especially when they're surrounded going uphill. Like, going uphill in 0k does not work out too well. In fact, I once won a ba or once won a skirmish, a little battle between three glaives, or using three glaives against about 10 or so by running uphill. It's very effective. However, that being said, with enough of an army in place, and with Lowry going uphill, I mean, this, this warrior is still dealing quite a bit of damage. Not sure if it's quite for cost, though. Kube is definitely in a much better map position. I mean, granted, he is losing air units as he goes through. I mean, these, these Jethros are doing their job. The shadows are going down to them, but at the same time, Lowry is not producing... Or it has to outproduce. I mean, the thing is, Kube has been really killing a lot compared to what has been produ produced by Lowry. Now, Lowry has been getting a lot of static defenses. I think that's where most of his money has been going, in fact. I'm waiting for him to set up some workers in this reclaim field over here. This frontline reclaim field, I'm not surprised no one has bothered to set up in. But the rear line one, not so sure about. Rogues are also up for Kube, by the way, and he is powering up. That's all he's building now. He's built enough bandits for his purposes. He's now going to rogues to get rid of the warriors directly. However, the glaives should be able to take care of the rogues with few issues. Some issues due to the speed, but few issues just because raiders get rid of skirmishers. They just can weave around the skirmisher missile or skirmisher rockets and then kill them. Admittedly, they have to actually try to weave. They have to try to dodge, but they can. And this group of rogues is going down. At the same time, the east side... The Shadow able to deal some damage to the Warrior, but that is the last Shadow gone down. 
Fusion Reactor being built for Cubay, but Cubay has no air units right now. No Air Force. That factory has been kind of useless. Or, it's been useful, but right now it's kind of useless. Lowry building up an air factory of his own. And starting to take out... Actually, starting to claim this metal field. Doesn't have any workers near there to really claim it, but he does have some workers to the west. He is getting all this metal. That's definitely good. Needs to use it, though. He does... He is accessing on metal quite heavily. Doing what he can, but he needs another caretaker in his main base. And I think this... Actually, I think the airplane plant is going to do it. Once that gets finished, then that will definitely be using the money he needs. Or using the metal he needs to get out of excess. Because if he's reclaiming on excess, it's a bit of a waste. And I think that's probably why he hasn't actually reclaimed the west fields yet. He hasn't actually needed to. But that being said, Lowry does have a pretty powerful position. His main weakness at the moment is the fact that he is... Well trying to attack in a really spread out way. Like, he is spread thin between unit types, he's spread thin in his front. Cubay only has this one area to defend with the Shieldbot Factory, which basically specializes in defense. Convict setting up a nice little shield wall as well, while reclaiming the middle field. So, Cubay is taking the middle field. Lowry has gotten his airplane plant set up. He is using that to spend the money he needs to get out of excess so he can actually bother to reclaim. And, looks like he is doing exactly that, starting to reclaim off the center area here after getting Metal Extractor. This is going to be really... This is going to die. This is not going to work at all. Bandits coming in, rogues coming in, that will tear apart this, missile, this Metal Extractor. And the worker here is not going to live. That Rector is not going to survive. Nice little ra raid here, though. Getting rid of Cubay's further mexes, the ones that he can't easily defend. But at the same time, Cubay going for the center, and that will definitely stop Lowry from pushing out that way. Now, Cubay does have a fusion plant. He does have overdrive, and he's actually not overdriving all that much. This fusion plant isn't connected to anything. It's providing the excess energy needed to cause overdrive to happen in the first place, but other than that, it's actually not doing much. Cubay getting all of his excess metal from Reclaim. In fact, if these convicts go down, I think Cubay would pretty much lose the game at this point. Although these bandits would be a bit of a threat. I think this these convicts are the main target. They need if they die, and it looks like Lowry is gonna try to see to that. A little bit difficult though. Some defenders in place to get rid of the glaives that are trying to get rid of the rogues. One of the rogues will probably go down, but that will be it. I don't know, maybe is two, are two rogues gonna go down? I think two rogues are gonna go down, and no, a bandit just barely saves it. So one rogue for the cost of five glaives. Not really a good trade. That being said, a phoenix coming in to take out the front lines. Much better option. Although even then a little bit risky. That being said, it does get rid of a rogue. Damages another one a little bit, but not very much. At the same time, a flank happening from the southwest. A couple of warriors and... Or at least a warrior. Trying to get rid of these bandits here. And these bandits are actually not in a great position to defend, but that warrior did not have enough health to actually do much. And attack coming from the center. Razor's Kiss in the center as well to get rid of these, these phoenixes before they deal too much damage, but that Razor's Kiss... Well, actually, not that vulnerable. It's in a good spot. There's enough bandits near to protect it. There's really not a whole lot that can be done to it directly. And since phoenixes are the focus here, not shadows, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for Lowry's deal with for Cubay. Because Cubay with his shadows could easily get rid of Razor's Kiss. Lowry, not so much. But Lowry does have enough phoenixes. He can deal with a lot of these raiders. And it's really what they're for. Getting rid of bunches of raiders and... Getting some stingers as well. Different, Lowry has definitely set up a defensive position in the center of the map. He does not want to... He's not going to go down quietly. And in fact, he's probably not going to go down at all. Another Phoenix shot coming in here. Getting rid of these bandits very effectively. Unfortunately, losing a Lotus in the process, but still... Bandit goes down, and... That is it for Cubay's raiding force. At least Cubay's current raiding force. Felons coming in afterwards are going to be using the convicts to be supported. However, how many convicts are there? Only eight convicts right now. Some of them have been killed. Glaze has been coming through, killing these convicts off, as has been Warrior. That did not work out too well. The felon is on fire, but that Phoenix was destroyed in the process. And another Phoenix attack coming in here will be damaging the convicts somewhat. We'll be getting rid of at least one rogue, possibly two. And Cubay, how many convicts does he have now? He has seven convicts now. He is losing builders. He does have thugs being set up. He does have an Aspis being set up. Or yes, an Aspis is being set up. Thugs being set up afterwards. He's going for a pure felon ball now. Is Lowry going to go for a sniper or is he going to go continually for glaives? Because glaives will not work. They really will not work against against felons at all. Snipers are apparently the counter or one of the bigger counters. 
but pretty much everything else just gets torn to shreds, especially with shield support, especially with the Aspis and a bunch of thugs. So Kubei is... Oh boy, Kubei's going to be in a very good position very soon. I mean, he has a shield link going on, he has the thugs in, he has the Aspis in, he has... A couple, he has two felons as well, though one of them is not connected to the rest of the ball, is connected to a convict. Not the biggest help. However, more convicts going down at this point. Only four convicts, well, five, but this one will soon die. So basically four convicts. That being said, Kube has basically reclaimed this whole section of the map. So he's still gotten the resources that he wanted. Lost a lot of convicts. Knew his own no! No, this convict not dead yet. Six health, but not dead. So yeah, Kube got the resources he needed. Lowry does not have those resources. He is going in... Actually, there it goes. There is, in fact, a sharpshooter. Apparently the unit that counters the shield ball, the felon ball. See how that works out? At the same time, Lowry is just raiding around the side, avoiding that felon, but still dealing some damage. Actually, he could probably go pretty safe. Or no, he can't go safely. Too many defenders to go for the main game for the main base, but he could. Well, he could harass the side, doing exactly what he's doing. The felon here is gonna be too strong. I mean, it it really wouldn't help. I think he might. I don't know, is he gonna go for it? I don't think so. He's going for something, I'm sure, with those phoenixes, but probably not the felon. He is over going for the felon with Stiletto. Is that gonna work? Setting it off, and he does get the felon. He gets the entire ball with the Stiletto. Nicely done. The Glaze left no problem tearing it apart, and, well, the spectator in chat during the game pointed out this is probably game, and I would say that no. No, it really isn't. Kyube has so much production power coming in here. He already had a second felon. I mean, yes, this is a bit of a setback, but I would not call this game yet. Especially given the amount of vandals coming in here. That's not happening twice. Kyube is going to see to that not happening twice. That being said, however, it is still going to be tough to prevent this phoenix from doing what it can. And it's going to be able to do quite a bit. However, the second felon is in place. There are more shields coming in for it, and the vandals are... No! There it is! There's the sharpshooter doing what it does best, getting rid of that felon. And another stiletto attack, not able to do too much. Gets a couple thugs, but that's not really what's effective here. And enough vandals to get, well, get rid of the phoenix, but not before it deals some damage. Now, the vandals, unfortunately, move themselves into a bad position. In fact, I think, you know, I think Ramark Manman might have been right in chat that this may have, in fact, been game. I mean, Lowry will still have to push through, but Kube did lose two felons. And he still hasn't gotten rid of... He still has not gotten rid of the stiletto. He does have some vandals left, and the stiletto is going to go down. There it goes. That's that stiletto flying into the ground. Typically a bad thing to do, but it had no choice. And now Lowry coming in for a counterattack, trying to get rid of all the vandals he can to keep his air force open. And where's that phoenix? I'm sure there's got to be a phoenix around here somewhere. No, not yet. No further phoenixes. That's unfortunate, because this is the perfect time to use it. Or nearly the perfect time. The Razor's Kiss would probably kill it, but they're, all those bandits were in a nice line. It would have been just absolutely perfect. The sharpshooter, not the most useful at the moment. No felons right now. Complete switch over to bandits. QB realizing that felons will not do the trick, but bandits probably will. Like The only downside is the positioning. Those two bandits did not have to die to those glaives. They were just on the edge of a line, and that was something that Lowry took advantage of. QB coming in, however, for the raise along the side. Lowry still has an advantage. His advantage in terms of economy, advantage in terms of military, which is a bit of a turnaround from before. Like about 15 minutes ago, Cube had 5k military and Lowry had about 2k, but complete flip there, especially with the loss. I mean, the loss of the felon ball was the big thing. And yeah, it's gonna be bandits from here on out. Cube entirely focused on mass raider. Lowry countering that with mass warrior. Pretty sensible thing to go for. Still has some glaives just in case a switch is needed, but yeah, that's. That being said, Cube is actually taking the reclaimer of the west side of the map that Lowry pretty much had for himself. Cube is taking that instead and going to be powering his factories even more with that. Just getting all the reclaim he can, and from there, just getting all the bandits he can. Admittedly, warriors will not go down to bandits easily, so he's got to have something else, some sort of backup. Thugs are in place. Actually, rogues are in place. That's the better option. A thug is in place, but rogues will get rid of the warriors without issue. Sharpshooters, of course, getting rid of the thugs without issue. So, yeah, sharpshooters, 1,500 damage a shot. Not good for large groups of raiders like this, but definitely effective against thugs. And more bandits coming to the center. Same time, 
Well, the center, though, along the top right. Same time, though, from the center, we do see Lowry is just going to break the center of the line. Now, Rogue's coming in here. Admittedly, three of them are dead. Sharpshooters will kill off three of them. Although, no, one of the sharpshooters using its shot up to hit a razor's kiss, not dealing a whole lot of damage to it. And the warriors are not in a good position. They can't easily get to the rogues. Now, the rogues completely counter warriors. The warriors can't easily get them if the war warriors trap them first. Sharpshooters will be able to do the trick, but looks like they're focusing more on getting rid of the razor's kiss first. Now, if they can get rid of these rogues, that will definitely work. The warriors getting surrounded by bandits. The bandits, however, are taking a lot of damage, but even with that, there are just so many bandits coming in here that the warriors are dying. They're taking a lot of bandits down with them, but they are going down. Only one warrior lives to tell the tale. One hero warrior. Sharpshooter is trying to dodge as best they can while taking care of these rogues. And not doing a terrible job of it either, actually. The rogues are going down pretty quickly. These sharpshooters are making themselves worth their cost somewhat. It will take a lot of rogues to do that. I mean, six each, but still. Oh, no. Except one of the sharpshooters does die. Now, Glaive's coming in to finish stuff. Coming in as well on a flank from the south. And those rogues are all dead, but more rogues are forthcoming. Like I said, production has been very, very good for Cubay right now. However, that attack to the south actually killed off a lot of the metal. So, in fact, Cubay does not have this anymore. He lost the western reclaim to Glaive's. He lost the southern metal extractors to warriors and enough glaze coming from the center that it's really going to come down to positioning but i think yes the way that lowry is coming in here he should work it should no never mind these glaze are overextending getting out of the group and getting killed for free right into cubay's nice little organized line but at the same time another metal extractor goes down for cubay and warriors at the front will be well actually glaze at the front taking shots to the rogues but the warrior still goes down to the rogues the Glaives, once again, moving a bit too far forward from each other, getting out of the group, getting broken up, and ultimately losing more of the number than needed. That being said, Lowry does have a pretty huge military advantage. He does have a huge economic advantage, like three times economic advantage. And he can just continue to pump out warriors. He can afford to lose the warriors like this. Cubay can't so much afford to lose units. And the Sharpshooter over taking some damage. I... Well, actually, the Rector's are the main target, not the Sharpshooter. Sharpshooter able to get out of there, remain cloaked, but... Once it kills another Rogue, Outlaw's trying to get rid of the Glaives here, push them out of the way, but there aren't enough bandits to really take advantage of that. And it looks like switching over to Convicts once again, QB trying to use Reclaim and probably try to rebuild his Metal Extractors, trying to use Reclaim to get back into the game. Another Sharpshooter shot comes in here. Just point out, these guys have... Those guys are pretty large. Like, this is their range. Like this, compared to say a glaive, which has a range of maybe in terms of radius, like a third of the radius at best, probably more like a quarter of the radius. Stinger coming in here, point out the stinger has about the same range, actually no, shorter range than, than the sharpshooter. And the stinger is pretty much the go-to mid-game heavy defense turret. However, Lowry's radar not quite accurate enough to get these rogues. However, it does have line of sight once again. Sharpshooter is able to damage one of the rogues. Well. Nearly damaged one of the rogues. Getting near them. And Glaives, this is much more important. Glaives getting rid of these convicts, trying to reclaim. QB doing his cannon with his reclaim, but not quite enough. He does have, of course, a lot of power, build power being pushed into the factories as a result of the reclaim, but the convicts are dying in the process. At the same time, middle of the map, he only has like one bandit, one outlaw, no rogues in play, and everything convicts. Eight convicts, but that's not going to really win him the game. Workers on their own do not a game win. It is military units that win the game. Except on Cooper Hill, in which case it is, in fact, workers that win the game because they just reclaim everything. Admittedly, this is a similar situation, but at this point, Lowry does have such a huge army. Going in for Rocco's just in case he needs it. Might not, but hey, why not? Especially with the Stinger coming up for Cubay. And... That being said, rockets are actually really good against shields. The thing is, inaccurate rocket weapons are really good against shields just because shields cover such a wide area. They can hit the shield, even if the unit's moving around a lot. That being said, it's also pretty good against things like stingers. And down that stinger goes! Not really doing too much damage. I think it maybe damaged this warrior a bit. That That's about it. Yeah, it, it didn't do much. Outlaw going down as well, which is pretty much what the rockos would be used for. And 
powering through Lowry, pretty much going for the kill. This is it. This is the kill shot. 350. Okay, dropping down a bit. But yeah, this is everything. Going for stilettos as well, just in case he needs it. Not going to need it. Gunship. Last minute gunship switch from Cube. He might be going for. He is going for a. What the heck? He's going for Valkyrie. He's going for air transport. I don't quite understand what he's trying to do at all. Like, I really don't know. Is he going for... No, it can't be going for a comm grab. Lowry lost his commander a long time ago. What could possibly be trying to transport? Out oh, he's trying to transport outlaws into the center? I okay, here I was expecting my he might go for either transporting convicts to a remote part of the map to reclaim and then go for a crow or something like that. I mean, it would be a really outlandish strategy, but it might just work. Looks like, no, instead, he is going up into... He's going straight into Lowry's base, dropping out some outlaws, and then just outlawing everything out. Bit of a last-ditch effort. Point out that in the main base, Rockers are coming into Cubase base, trying to finish that up, but outlaws are in here, taking out wind generators like nobody's business. My goodness, that's a lot of wind gens gone. Getting rid of these caretakers as well, dealing quite a lot of damage, in fact. Not, not a bad last-ditch effort. For a last-ditch effort, this is doing pretty well. But at the same time, two dozen Rockos coming in and... Oh, yeah. Two dozen Rockos are coming in to tear apart Cubay's base. Trying to do what he can, but not quite enough. Admittedly, the Outlaws are doing a great job. We'll be able to get rid of this click... Oh, well, it's suppressing the click about factory very nicely. Stopping any further production from coming in. However, that being said, Lowry already had everything he needed to kill Cubay. I mean, Cubay trying to do what he can... Losing the fusion plant, and along with that, the airplane, well, the airplane rearm pad. Losing the shield life factory, going to lose the gunship plant very shortly. Not building anything. His caretakers are just repairing each other, but he's not building anything on top of that, and he is going to get rid of this. He might get rid of the clicky factory. If it dies, though, the outlaw will die with it, as will Cubase hopes of winning this game. Not that it matters, though. Cubase throwing in the towel. Very interesting last ditch ever, though. I'm, I'm impressed by that. Outlaws in the opponent's base. That probably would have worked about it better about, like, ten minutes ago. But still. Interesting. The neat neat little last-ditch use of transports. So hope you enjoyed that, and that will be it for me tonight. So thank you all for watching, everybody, and have a good night.